Hello, welcome to my presentation. I'm Lucas Sommer. I'm a research engineer with Coldplay Software. The work that I'm going to talk about today was part of my PhD research at TU Darmstadt. The work is titled SPNC, an open source MLIR based compiler for fast sample network inference on CPUs and GPUs. It's a quite long title, so let's go ahead and try to get out of the, each of these parts. First part is some broad networks. What are some broad networks? Some broad networks are a machine learning technique from the class of probabilistic models. And they try to capture a joint probability distribution through a directed I-cycle graph consisting of three types of nodes. The leaf nodes that capture univariate distribution, the orange ones here, product nodes like the red one here, and weighted sum nodes like the green one here with the two associated weights. Um, if you have obtained such a SPN graph, you can then run different probabilistic queries via a bottom-up graph traversal, asking for something like a joint probability or a marginal probability, for example. This is rather abstract, so let's look at an example. Um, we have a distribution of data here. So we have four cr clusters here. Um, it's age and income at a typical university. So we have the professors up here. We have the administrative stuff here. PhD students and undergraduate students. From this data set and distribution, we can now learn an SPN graph using um, SPN learning algorithms. Uh, the result of such a learning algorithm would be a DAC like the one shown here, where you have leaf nodes for age and income. And in the income for one of these clusters would look something like that. So it's a distribution of income in that group of people. After we have now obtained this graph, we can now try to answer queries, like the query, what's the probability of earning $100,000 at the age of 29? So we start at the leaf nodes down here, and we query for the age of professors being 29, and the probability for that is quite low. So we get a low probability value here. At the same time, the probability of a professor earning that uh, 100,000 euros is quite high, so we end up with a high probability. We will do the same for all the leaf nodes in the tree, and we will multiply the values, multiply them by the weight, and sum them up to have to find our final a probability of close to zero in this case. So these are probabilistic graphical. Uh, these are some product networks. Um, let's look at the next part, which is MLIR. MLIR is a compiler infrastructure for domain-specific computation, which was originally developed at Google, but is now part of the LVM framework. And the whole of LVM, uh, the whole of MLIR is based on the notion of so-called dialects, which capture allow us to capture domain-specific high-level semantics. So in our case, the semantics of some broad networks. And then if you have captured this high-level semantics, do a step-by-step -step lowering towards executable machine code. Also, MLIR provides a lot of common infrastructure like path managers, pattern matching that we can use to build our compiler. So what is the goal of this work of SPNC? Um, the SPN software ecosystem, due to the fact that SPNs themselves are only like very young, they only, the first paper was published only in 2011, the software ecosystem is comparably sparse, especially if you compare it to the software ecosystem for neural networks, where you have large frameworks like TensorFlow or PyTorch. There are two available libraries that are very popular for SPNs. One is being SPFlow by Molina et al., and the other one is LibSPN by Pronobis et al. They both implement inference in Python, which makes it hard to deploy, especially in embedded scenarios, and the performance also leaves quite a lot of room for improvement. At the same time, we know that compilation for neural networks is very successful. You have frameworks like TensorSource, XLA, Facebook's Clo, and TDM that provide great performance for neural networks. Our goal is to develop a domain-specific compiler for SPN inference and integrate that tightly with the SPFlow Python library. Compilers should be able to target two different platforms, one being CPU. Modern CPUs provide vectorization and multi-threading to accelerate inference, and the other being GPU, where you want to use the single instruction multiple threads execution model 
to perform fast inference for batches of input data. And the whole implementation of the compiler will be based on MLIR. So let's look at how our compiler works. So first of all, we have two SPN specific dialects. The first one is high SPN and it tries to answer the questions, what do we want to know? So what is the, the query that the user posts? So we have the SPN graph, the direct icyclic graph in here, and we have the query around that. It's a very high level of abstraction. It's very close to SP flows representation, so we can use it as an input form. Second SPN specific dialect is called low SPN, and it tries to answer the questions, what do we need to compute to actually answer the query? It consists of tasks being wrapped in a kernel, and each of these tasks will do data access and arithmetic operations. First step that we do with our low SPN dialect is a graph partitioning. SPN models, especially for complex workloads, can grow very large, which would pose a massive challenge towards compilation time. So to, in order to reduce the compilation time, we will perform graph partitioning using graph partition or heuristic to split this one task, this one morphologic task, into multiple tasks, each of them having data access and arithmetic, and being wrapped in this kernel. The subtask that we get from our graph partition heuristic will form a directed acyclic graph for the execution order in which these tasks need to be executed. Next step on our, in our compilation flow is we need to perform something called bufferization in the MLIR framework. So far we've been using abstract tensors, which allows us to track the values generated and consumed by operations very precisely, which is especially useful for graph partitioning, but we now need to switch to a more concrete representation, in this case, memory buffers and reads and writes to these memory buffers. That is what happens in bufferization. In this step, we also perform other optimizations, for example, classical constant folding as common in compilers. The last step, we now need to answer the questions, how do we compute what we need to compute? And for that, we have target specific lowerings for CPUs and GPUs. So for CPUs, we want to perform vectorization. So what we, this essentially performs a loop vectorization on the batch. We do explicit vectorization here, and then we use a combination of MLIR dialects to represent that. The thread parallel execution will be handled by our runtime component, as we will see in a second. The mapping is that each kernel will become a function and each of the tasks wrapped inside the kernel will also become a function called from the kernel, where each task will contain a vectorized loop with the memory access and arithmetic necessary for that task. The compilation flow for the CPU looks something like that. So we start from SP flow, we have our two SPN specific dialects. Then we have a bunch of MLIR provided dialects that we will use to represent the capture the, the vectorized computation. And then via the LVMI dialect, we go to LVMIR from where we can create an executable that will be loaded and executed with multiple threads at runtime. Similar flow is used for the GPU target lowering. So in this case, our kernel becomes a host function and the tasks become a device kernel that will execute on the GPU. The host function is also responsible for data movement between the host and the GPU device, whereas the device kernels use the single instruction multiple threads execution model to compute a batch in parallel across the multi, multi threads on the GPU. The GPU compilation flow is also similar. We have an SP flow at the top again. We have our two SPN specific dialects. We use a slightly different set of MLIR provided dialects to capture the SEMT um, execution model and all the necessary data movements. Then going to the LVM dialect, we will split our modules into the GPU part, which will go through NVMIR, PTX assembly, and finally to a QBIN, the CUDA specific binary format, which will be embedded in the final executable. The host part, will just be compiled similar to our CPU executable, so it goes to LVMIR from there to executable. And we can later on import. Okay, with our compilation flow complete, let's look at the how fast our inference is actually. 
So we have two different applications that we want to look at. The first one is called RAT SPN, which is a special SPN technique which uses to generate random SPN graph structure in contrast to learning the graph structure and then only trains the weights. This allows for much faster training of large SPNs, um, which is especially useful for applications like image classification, which benefit from this large size of SPN. In our concrete example, we will look at image classification based on the MNIST and Fashion MNIST data set. The second application we're going to look at is speaker identification. So the task here is to identify the speaker that is currently speaking from a stream of audio. We have one pre-trained SPN per speaker. We have 628 speakers. And for the audio streams, we have 250,000 clean speech examples and 1.2 million noisy speech samples, which basically add background noise like a construction site on top of the clean speech samples. This background noise will make some of the input features unreliable, which means that we will need to use marginalized inference for the noisy samples to um, handle the features that have become an unreliable because of the background noise. First thing we're going to look at is the effect of our craft partitioning. We have compile time in blue or violet as you want, and we have the execution time in green. The y-axis for the execution time is in the right-hand side in milliseconds, and on the left-hand side we have the y-axis for our compilation time. As you can see, the, the compilation time depends on the maximum size of the task that we allow in during partitioning. So we set a maximum size for each of the tasks during partitioning. So if you have 350,000 nodes and a maximum task size of 10,000 nodes, the partitioner will partition this graph into roughly 35 different tasks or partitions. You can see that the partitioning also has an impact on execution time because um, it was a if you partition the graph into multiple tasks, we need to store intermediate results to memory and read them again from memory. So if we have very small tasks and more of those small tasks, we will have a higher execution time, whereas we have we have fewer tasks, we have a faster execution time. For the CPU, the sweet spot seems to be here around 10,000 nodes per partition. So we will use that for the rest of the evaluation. For the GPU, we can do a similar um, comparison, but we have to be careful with the y-axis here because this is actually, this is 600 seconds, this is 5,000 seconds on the lowest tick here. So you can see that with the GPU, the uh, compilation time increases very fast if you um, increase the size of your partitions. So again, a sweet spot seems to be around 10,000 um, per nodes per partition because um, we get a reasonable compilation time and a good performance with that. So let's look at the inference results. We are comparing here against the TensorFlow implementation of RAT SPNs. So we can see that the GPU implementation of TensorFlow is much faster than the CPU implementation of TensorFlow. And we can see that our CPU implementation with vectorization and multi-threading is actually performing on par with the TensorFlow GPU implementation. Our GPU implementation is slightly slower, um, which is due to the fact that the TensorFlow uh, implementation only needs us to run a single TensorFlow model with a single invocation for all of the 10 classes, whereas we have to have this one evacuation per class. So we have 10 invocations and we need to do more tr data transfers because every invocation will involve some data transfers. This is a limitation of ASP flow internal representation format. Um, our second application, we're going to compare our performance against the um, SP flow inference, which is implemented in Python. So the first bar up here is um, our compilation for the CPU not performing any vectorization, but performing multi-threading. We can see that we already get a 560x because we have um, a native executable compared to Python inference. 
if we um, add AVX2 vectorization and use libmvec for fast math routines, we get 800x speed up over SP flow. And if we go to AVX512 platform with the Intel short vector math library for optimized math routines, we get up to 970x speed up. On the GPU, the speed up is not as high because a lot of time is spent in copying data to the GPU and back again because the task itself is rather small. So there's a lot of overhead on the GPU. In comparison with the TensorFlow backend of SPFlow, which is not a native TensorFlow implementation, but a SPFlow backend for TensorFlow, you can see that this achieves only a speed up of roughly 1.5x, whereas we get up to 970x speed up. That is for clean speech. And for noisy speech, we can do the same comparison. So we have similar configurations. We see improvements um, across the whole board up to 935x on the CPU and up to 520x on the GPU. We do not see any TensorFlow bars here because the TensorFlow backend of SPFlow doesn't support marginalized inference, which is important for the speaker identification application. So in conclusion, we can say we have built a MLRR-based compilation flow for some broad network inference, uh, which currently supports all the CPUs supported by LLVM. What we currently do not yet support is cross compilation, so you can only compile for the CPU in the system you're running the compiler on. We support vectorization on AVX, AVX2, AVX512, and ARM Neon. And as a GPU backend, we currently support NVIDIA GPUs. In the evaluation, we've seen that we can significantly increase the inference throughput. So we've seen up to 976x improvement compared to the SPFlow Python inference on a CPU with vectorization and optimized math routines from the vendor. And we can see up to 524x on CUDA GPUs. Again, the difference between the GPU and the CPU is the additional overhead for the launch on the GPU and the necessary data transfers between the CPU and the GPU, which in the case of our speaker identification application with rather small kernels um, leads to some overhead and therefore the performance is not quite as high as it is on the CPU in this case. Um, which brings me to the last part of my talk, um, the open source part. So SPNC is completely open source under Apache version 2 license. You can access it on this GitHub URL that you can see here. Um, we have extensive documentation on how to build the whole compiler and all the um, dependencies from source, but we also have pre-built Python wheels available for Ubuntu 20.4 and similar Linux distributions um, that you can directly download and use with your um, Python S uh, SPN application. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me at the email address listed here. So thank you very much for listening to my talk, and I hope to see you again soon in person.